So hello everyone, welcome here. My name is Wim Winters and in this video I have something really exciting to share with you. This is also something in 1932 source that has some, I wouldn't say it has some mysterious ending, but some open questions at the end. So I will need to put this in to the context of its time. So the book I'm holding here right now is one part out of two, two very thick volumes. It's a Dutch music lexicon published in the Netherlands in 1932. There is a supplement of 1949. We're going to talk about that in a minute, but I'm going to read you the entry of this encyclopedia on metronome. And so because this is one of the rare occasions in which I can use my mother tongue, which is not even true here because it's an older version of Dutch that I'm using that we are using today. I will read you the source in Dutch first and then translate it into English. So in Dutch it sounds like this. Op de naam Melzel berust de algemeen gebruikelijke aanwijzing bij muziekstukken met MM. Kwart noot 50 enzovoort. De achtste note duren even lang als een tik van de metronoom wanneer het gewicht op 50 graad is ingesteld. So in English it is because of Melzel we still find the indication the mm quarter note 50 and so on and then between brackets the eighth notes last as long as one tick of the metronome so this source was presented to me was shared with me by Lawrence de Man you will have seen or you will see Lawrence de Man here at the Fritz Pianoforte playing some beautiful Berger etudes Lawrence is you could say a colleague of mine. He was one of the last students of also my teacher Jacques van Oortmessen in Amsterdam. And when I received that, of course, I was like shocked because honestly, 1932 to have such a clear whole beat description because that it is, quarter note, quarter note 50 means the ticks of the metronome indicate the eighth note. You cannot be clearer than that, as I've been saying here all along. The metronome marks, the metronome ticks indicate the subdivision, at least in the 19th century historical reading of the metronome, that you find here quite literally. And I must be honest with you on this, as happy as I was reading this, the first idea was, okay, but this is 1932. If his source is correct and not a misprint, then it certainly has to be an outliner as a source. So what's the context? What, in which context has this book been published? And so I dove a little bit deeper in that. I ordered the book, also the supplement of 1949, and this becomes really interesting. First of all, this is a very highly esteemed encyclopedia. So there was a team of people, of highly professional people, who worked on this. Not that they cannot make misprints or can write something that is not correct. But also in the first 1932 edition already, you had a list of errata, so things that were not published right or were misprints. So in that list there is nothing about the metronome. So then it was of course waiting for the 1949 supplement to arrive or order the books because it's not online to see if in the 1949 supplement there is any mention of the metronome entry in the 1932 version that was wrong. And in this 300 page uh, thick supplement there is nothing on the metronome. And moreover, in the 1949 preface, we read that people back then, so in 1949, again went through the entire 1932 version of this encyclopedia to see if there were things that needed some correction. And if they needed correction, they would have been taken on in the 1949 supplement, but the metronome is not there. So from this bird's angle perspective, we can only say that this source is as clean as it can get. It had two major rounds of corrections and neither of those the metronome entry needed to be corrected. And so let's go a little step further and see what the tradition is in which this encyclopedia was published. If we again go to the 1932 version, we see that there is a reference to two major works of the 19th century. Of course, the Hugo Riemann lexicon, which is, I think, one of the most influential ones in Europe, but especially also the Viotta Encyclopedia of Music, which was published in 1883, 84, 85. So before this encyclopedia or music lexicon, 
the Viotta lexicon was the standard work of the Dutch language, as in many countries and languages you have such standard works. So Viotta was online, but I ordered the books myself. I wanted to have those. And by the way, they contain so many names that have been forgotten today completely, but are important for me because in the editions I have here, a lot of those musicians were named here. And so let's see what the 1883 encyclopedia has to say about the metronome. So the entry of the 1883 encyclopedia on the metronome is longer than the 1932 version, but let's focus on the last part which has some similarities. So let me read it first in Dutch as well. The graden lopen van 50 tot 160. So what it says here, the grades are from 50 to 160. So it's clear that Viotta in 1883 also used an older description of the metronome because the metronome in 1883 was already having the same scale as today, from 40 to 208. So it's a side remark, but nevertheless important. And then he continues. Heeft de componist boven een muziekstuk bijvoorbeeld 8e noot 50 gezet, dan schuift de executant het gewicht van de metronoom op 50 graad van de slinger, brengt deze in beweging en rekent vervolgens bij het uitvoeren van het stuk op elke slingering ten duur van een 8e noot. This is beautiful old Dutch that could be translated uh, like this. When a composer puts 8th note 50 above music, the performer moves the rod of the metronome on 50, set it into motion and calculate for each vibration the duration of an 8th note. So you will notice that this 1883 encyclopedia speaks from 8th note 50 and the 1932 version speaks from quarter note 50. Now, if we just focus on this Viotta 1883 version, then this is one of those descriptions of the metronome where the understanding or the true understanding if it is whole beat or half or single beat, depends on the interpretation of the word slingering, which can be translated into beat or vibration, oscillation, you name it. If oscillation or vibration is a full swing, which in many cases in the 19th century has been described like that, then this is a whole beat description. If it's a single swing, then it's a single beat description. So if you would have discussion black and white, then this source of 1880 is kind of not giving you the ultimate answer. You have to put it in the context of its time. So there are two solutions actually for this to be, for this 1932 source. The first solution is that we stick to the fact that in 1932 and in 1949, there was a complete revision of the text and that the metronome entry was given exactly as those people wanted to have, like a reference to the historical use of the metronome because that's the description, that's one option. And then we would say, I would say, that in 1932 they were much more specific, much clearer in the explanation of the metronome use. They didn't, they didn't use the word slingering or beats or vibration or whatever, they were very specific. Quarter note 50, one tick equals an eighth note. That's as clear as you can get. And so in other words, in 1932 they might have just updated the language, the wordings for an audience that perhaps was not so familiar anymore with this old way of describing the metronome. And remember that the people who worked on this 1932 uh, encyclopedia of course had their education in the 19th century. So it shouldn't surprise us that they just left this entry based upon the Viotta encyclopedia in the historical quote-unquote authentic way, which is a whole beat metronome practice. But can I exclude 100% that this is not a misprint? Of course not. But who am I to doubt this entry in such a major work? And moreover, we're going to see in next videos over the coming months and maybe year, there is a refocus on metronome research on the, in the early 20th century, where more and more pieces, more and more metronome numbers are shared with me from people who say, hey, have a look at this, because this is just not possible. This is too fast. No one plays this like that. And so, you know, if people ask, where is the transition from whole beat to half or single beat? It must have been gradually from the end of the 19th century, but especially in the early 20th century and more more especially even 
in the period around World War I. There things have changed for composers like Ravel, for composers like Max Reger, that can only be explained from within the context of the historical WBMP transitioning to a single beat practice. If you want to dive right into the fascinating research of the early 20th century metronome marks, I have a playlist here of four videos about Isidore Philippe, a very important influential pianist that you only can explain from the WBMP. So go ahead and dive right into it. Has the last word been said about this? Who knows? But it was too fascinating not to share this with you. As with other stories that are upcoming, be sure not to miss them by subscribing to the channel and hit the bell. And if you do that, we see each other very soon again. Bye.